Hi everyone, my name's Jen. I'm an author and a book reviewer and last weekend I said that the next time I hoped to be speaking to you would be in cooler weather in the autumn and alas, no. But I think tomorrow it's going to start cooling down. So next week, maybe, I will see you in cooler weather. I think we would um, all enjoy that, quite frankly. Today, I am going to do one of my very specific book recommendation videos. I worked as a bookseller for 10 years. I've worked in the book industry now for over 15 years. I just really like recommending books to people. As we call it in the book industry, it is the bookseller warm fuzzies when you recommend a book to someone and they happen to enjoy it. So a few weeks ago on Instagram, I put up one of those question boxes and I said, do you have any very specific book recommendation requests that you need to be fulfilled and I am here to do that for you. I'm going to do another one of these in a month or so if you want to get a bookish gift for someone in your life and you're a bit stuck you can say dear Jen I would like to buy a book for my mum she likes these things what would you recommend. So if you have any needs like that you need any bookish Christmassy requests um, answered please leave those in a comment down below I'll also put a question bo box up on Instagram as well nearer the time but I know that not everyone is on Instagram so if you would like me to answer a request in that video leave a comment in this one and I'll come back to it when I come around to filming it so today I think we've got about 50 requests for me to fulfill and I think probably I'll be recommending more books than those 50 because I cannot be stopped. Um, I will, <laughs> maybe will live to regret this, um, list all the books in the description box down below. They will not all fit in the description box because there is a character limit so check the pinned comment as well where the list will continue. I will also, may live to regret this too, insert covers <laughs> on the screen as I go as well. So we have a lot of things to talk about, um, we should probably just start. The first one is a request from someone to recommend books for fans of Wolf Hall, which is a series of books that I very much admire but don't personally love. I wish I did because I think it's an amazing thing to fall in love with, the language is really rich, the amount of research that Hilary Mantel did is just incredible, but for some reason we're just not friends. Anyway, if you do love Wolf Hall, I would recommend checking out Susanna Clarke's writing because I think her writing in Hilary Mantel's is quite similar. My personal favourite historical fiction, which doesn't relate to royalty, but my favourite, is The Crimson Petal and the White by Michelle Faber, which follows a sex worker called Sugar who wants to be a novelist and she befriends a customer hoping that he can be a patron for her. It's got Jane Eyre references and it's very immersive. I also love The Butcher's Hook by Janet Ellis, content warning for sexual abuse in this one. This one is set in the 1700s in London and it's about a young girl called Anne Jacob whose parents want to marry her off and she is not having any of it and she decides she's going to take revenge on all the men who have wronged her. I should say that one is particularly brilliant on audio because Janet narrates it herself. The next one is one that I really couldn't control myself when it came to answers because I had so many ones that I wanted to recommend. Someone said, could you please recommend books that contain liminal spaces, literal or metaphorical? So, I wanted to recommend Pet by Akweke Emeze, which is about a young girl called Jam who finds that she can make her mum's paintings come alive and the painting says that there is a monster in her best friend Redemption's house and she has to try and help him. Ghosted by Jen Ashworth is one of those books that kind of is hinging on the is it supernatural, is it not, and you're not sure throughout most of the book. It's really about relationships falling apart and it's about grief and I just thought it was brilliant. The Need by Helen Phillips is a very unsettling book about an archaeologist who starts to discover all these objects which seem to be historical but almost like they came from an alternate reality. It really, really creeped me out when I read it, as did uh, Rumina Lamb's what is the title of that book? Leave the World Behind. I completely left my brain there. It left my brain. It left my brain behind. Leave the World Behind by Rumina Lam is about a family who go to stay in a house just outside of New York and then it appears that something has gone wrong in the world because all of the internet goes down, the electricity goes down, they don't know what's happening. It gives me the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. There's a film coming out later this year and I don't even know if I can handle watching it. 
Braised Pork by Anne Yu is another book I would recommend and I feel like I don't recommend that book enough. I really, really loved it when I read it a couple of years ago. It's about a woman who finds her husband dead and he's drawn this weird mermaid on a piece of paper and he's clutching it in his hand. She doesn't know what it means and she goes on a journey to try and work out what is going on but many strange things happen along the way. The next request was for a recommendation similar to Tender is the Flesh. Um, so I don't have a recommendation for a book with cannibalism in it, which is what this is. It is a dystopian book where all animal meat has become contaminated, so you're not allowed to eat it anymore. And it's decreed, I think, I actually haven't read the book, but I believe it's decreed that you either have to become vegan or you can eat other humans. So some people start to eat other humans. So the book I wanted to recommend doesn't have cannibalism in it, but it does have body horror. It's a book I read really recently. It's called Sealed by Naomi Booth. It's about a couple who move from a city in Australia out to the countryside because they're trying to get away from a pandemic that started. It's not a pandemic that is particularly realistic, touch wood, please, but it is a pandemic where basically people's bodies seal up, like your eyes cloud over, your ears cloud close um, your mouth closes over and you can't breathe anymore like it just is so claustrophobic um, yes so if you think you can handle that I would recommend it it's an extremely tense book someone else wanted a good book for a plane journey 28 hours of flying I am really bad at flying I'm a very anxious flyer and for that reason I Personally, what I find most comforting is taking a book that I have already read and love, a comfort read. And for me, that would be something like His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman because it's massive and I could completely lose myself in it. But if you wanted to tackle something new, I mean, maybe you haven't read His Dark Materials before, in which case I would recommend it. But if you have, um, maybe something like The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber, which is huge. It's about a man called Peter who's sent to the other side of the universe to preach the word of God to this alien life form and I just absolutely adored it when I read it six, seven years ago. It's been quite a while now. I love it. I think about that book all the time. I really should reread it. I'd also recommend A Place for Us by Fatima Farheen Mirza, which is a very immersive family saga about five members of one Indian American Muslim family. The eldest son left home when he was a teenager and then we try and work out why. And the novel jumps from time period to time period so you never get particularly settled. It's like trying to piece together a jigsaw. It completely destroyed me. Loved it. I will link an interview that I did with Fatima in the description box down below too if you're interested and want to read more about it before diving in. Someone else is looking for a book similar to Kirstie Logan's writing because they love the gloaming and they also loved the short story collection What She's Having, which is a short story collection I would recommend too. It's women writing about their relationship with food or characters' relationship with food in many different ways. I would recommend Supper Club by Lara Williams, which is a little bit gritty and dark, but it's, it's very much about food. Maybe a bit off kilter, I'd also recommend Woman Eating by Claire Coda, which is about a young female vampire who is trying not to eat people. She's just joined art college and she would quite like to fit in and make friends and, you know, death may put a dampener on that. She is really obsessed with human food, which she can't eat. And she likes watching videos of people doing mukbangs or cooking, you know, food vloggers. Um, she just has this complete and utter obsession with it because she can't have it. Someone else would like a book recommendation that follows a character who for some reason is living on the outskirts of their own life slash society. I would recommend Diary of a Void by Emi Yagi, which is about a woman who is fed up of her office job in Tokyo. She feels like she's being mistreated. She's constantly passed over because she's a woman. She's given all these menial tasks to do, like emptying the bins and passing out people's posts. So she decides to tell everyone that she's pregnant, even though she's not, because she thinks that that will mean that she's given respect, but it backfires a little bit. And as for someone who's living very much on the outskirts of their own life, in adverted commas and society, I would recommend Mrs. Death, Mrs. Death by Selena Godin, which is narrated by Death. And I would particularly recommend the audiobook of this. It's very poetic and Selena reads it so well. I was asked for a recommendation of a queer book that has a 90s feel to it, but isn't sad. I felt this in my soul because as a young queer person, I tried so hard to find happy, 
queer books and it was a struggle thankfully it's not so much of a struggle these days but I would just go to Waterstones and try and find things I would find things like Annie on my mind which I hoped would be amazing and were just severely depressing a book that has 90s vibes though I want to recommend Mr. Loverman by Bernadine Evaristo which isn't set specifically in the 90s it spans quite a, a big period of time from the 1960s to about 2010 um, but it is a book that is so heartfelt and warm it's not always happy it's not always happy but it does not have a sad ending which I think is the most important thing it's about a man called Barry who is in his 70s he lives in London with his wife Carmel he's originally from Antigua he's always been in love with his secret partner Maurice and then he thinks in his old age he should probably do something about that next up I was asked for a recommendation for a book that is full of intrigue any genre I could have recommended so many things for this, but I wanted to give a shout out to A Little Luck by Claudia Pinheiro, which I read recently. It is a book that lets you in on a character's past slowly as you get to know her over the course of the novel. And you know that something not very nice happened to her a long time ago that she's been running away from and she's decided she's going to confront, but you don't know what that thing is. And when you do find out what that thing is, it will break you. You're welcome. Someone asked me for Stranger Things vibes, kids in the 80s or 90s where they are outside solving mysteries. And I know that this is the go-to recommendation, so maybe you've heard this before, but it's the go-to recommendation for a reason. It fits this prompt so well, and that is Paper Girls. It is a series about a group of girls who uh, deliver papers and they accidentally time travel. There is also a TV series of this, which I would very much recommend. And I think the second season is coming out soon. Someone else said, I need a book that will replace The Days of Abandonment by Elena Ferrante, sized hole in my heart. I haven't read this book, but I did look up the plot and I know it's about a woman who is questioning her life, I think, after her partner leaves her. And I would therefore recommend The Faster I Walk, The Smaller I Am by Kirstie A. Skomswold, which is about a woman whose husband died or left her and she doesn't really feel like she exists anymore she feels like she's never seen she feels like she's easily replaceable there are other people who have her name in the phone book and she starts to wonder maybe she is actually one of those people or they're trying to steal her identity it's very introspective very funny in places and also heartbreaking in others someone asked me for a recommendation of lesbians in space and i'm sure that sci-fi readers will have other recommendations so if you do please leave those in a comment down below but the one that sprung to mind for me was in ascension by martin mckinnis which is one of the booker prize long-listed books at the moment i will say though that only one of them is actually in space and her partner is not in space so maybe that's not what you want maybe you want both of them to be in space um i would also recommend not space but deep sea and you know that's very similar vibes i would recommend our wives under the sea by julia armfield in fact in ascension and our wives under the sea have very similar feelings that's about two women one of whom has gone on a, a submarine trip and comes back forever changed it is about letting go, it's about grief, it has shape of water feelings at various points, but very twisted. I was asked for a recommendation of a book with an autistic main character who's an adult. I would recommend All the Little Bird Hearts by Victoria Lloyd Barlow. I would also particularly recommend the audiobook of this. It's about a woman called Sunday who is autistic. Her daughter is getting ready to leave home. She's taking her exam soon. She'll be going off to university. And a new neighbour has just moved in next door. And Sunday thinks she's going to befriend her, but it doesn't really go to plan. I was asked for books, novels, especially on sister relationships, maybe with one sister moving away, possibly to France. And in my head, I had remembered this book as a sister moving away to France. And then I looked it up and checked and actually she moved to Greece. But I say, we're in the general ballpark, <laughs> kind of. So if that still appeals, I would recommend checking out Silver and Salt by Eleanor Dimmitt. It wasn't actually a book that I loved, but I know that so many other people love it. For instance, I read it because Sarah Moss recommended it to me. So, you know, I would normally trust her taste. It was just on this occasion. I didn't particularly love it. It is about losing their father and how these two sisters have very different 
memories of what their dad was like. Um, so yeah, it was a bit too on the nose for me, but it may be something that you would like to check out. I recently read Western Lane by Chetna Maru, which is about a group of sisters whose mum has recently passed away, and it's about how they deal with that, their relationship with their father, and also their relationship with the sport squash, which their father would like them to play to kind of let out all of their emotion. And a book about sisters that I would like to read soon, so can't personally recommend, but you may want to check it out, is When We Were Sisters by Fatima Asghar. I have absolutely loved her poetry in the past, so I'm sure that her prose is going to be beautiful too. Next, someone said I would love a queer story about mermaids. Not your typical mermaid book, something along the lines of Kirsty Logan, which has a bit of a twist. And I haven't read this book yet, but it arrived this morning. I bought it because Holly over at Holly Dunn Design, I'll link her Instagram down below, recommended this one to me. She slid into my DMs and was like, Jen, have you read this? Because I think you would really love it. And I immediately bought it because it sounds so great. So maybe you would like to check it out too. This is Chlorine by Jade Song. I just hit myself with it. I have such a habit of doing that with books when I hold them up, I just hit my glasses. It says, Ren Yu is a swimmer. Her daily life starts and ends with the pool. Her teammates are her only friends, her coach, her guiding light. Intimacy is shared in locker room, cubicles, success, success measured in personal bests. So I think this is about women who want to become mermaids. I think it's got body horror in here. It says on the back, mermaids swim in chlorine, thrive in locker rooms. Mermaids are not born, we are made. Creepy, full of, as Holly put it, feminist rage, which, you know, always here for. So yeah, this one sounds really intriguing and I think I'm gonna add it to my books to read around Halloween time. Next, someone said, I'm not getting on with any Japanese fiction apart from Convenience Store Woman by Siaka Murata. What should I try? I would recommend trying Miss Ice Sandwich by Miko Kawakami because I feel that that book is almost like somebody observing Kiko in Convenience Store Woman. There's lots of other things going on in, as well. It's only 90 pages long. I thought the imagery was concise and wonderful. I'll link my review in the description box down below. I haven't actually enjoyed Miko, Kawi, Miko Kawakami's other work, but this one I thought was brilliant. Next, I'm looking for something similar to Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo. That is a book split into five acts and in each section we get to focus on three different people. And I think we revisit some people towards the end because otherwise that would be 15 people. And I know that there are 12 people in this book. It's 11 women, one non-binary person. These are mostly black characters growing up in Britain. And in each section we get a girl, a woman and someone else who was related to the previous two. And it's amazing because you get to see different people's perspectives on each other. And each time you feel like you're side with whichever narrator is speaking. It's very complex, very layered, just fantastic. One of the best books I've ever read. I would recommend Transcendent Kingdom by Yael Jassy, which isn't as epic in scope as Bernadine Evaristo's is, but is an intricate look at family relationships, specifically between a daughter, a brother, and a mother, and how those can be seen from different angles. Loved it. Next up is maybe an obvious recommendation from me because I've recommended it a few times, but just in case you haven't heard me say this before, someone specifically has said, I'm looking for a book similar to Out by Natsuo Carino, but with a better ending. Bandit Queens by Perini Shroff is a fantastic book. It was one of the books that was on the Women's Prize long list this year. It's about a woman called Gita who lives in rural India and people think that she murdered her husband. She didn't, but she's quite keen for people to think that she did because it makes her feel safe as a woman living on her own. Problem is when local women then want to kill their husbands, they come to her for advice. So it's very funny, um, but also, you know, goes to dark places. And I thought that the ending was way better than Out, which is a book with a, not a similar premise, I suppose. Well, it is about women killing their husbands. That is as far as the similarities go. The tone is very different. But yeah, the ending of that one sucked. So if you want a better ending, try Bandit Queens. Next up, someone said, can I have poetry anthology recommendations for those of us who don't know where to start? The Forward Prize is one of my favorite prizes for poetry. It's awarded every year. And the judges then put together an anthology of work by the winning shortlisted and commended poets. It's always a year forward, no pun intended. So this year's prize, which is the 2023 prize, the book is the Forward Prize 2024, I think, because it comes out at the end of the year. So maybe check out the Forward Prize 
anthology 2024. I was a judge for the Ford Prize in 2018, so I edited, along with the other judges, the Ford Prize 2019 collection. So that's my personal favourite because it's got work in by Dana Smith and Kavar Akbar and Liz Berry and all of our favourites, so you might want to check that out. I'm also part of an anthology called 100 Queer Poems. I'm one of the contributors in that, not an editor. That's edited by Andrew McMillan and Mary Jean Chan, and it's a collection of 100 poems by 100 Queer Poets. I think the title is quite self-explanatory, but it's a wonderful book and will introduce you to lots of new people. Next, hi Jen, I would like something similar to Never Let Me Go by Kazu Ishiguro. Never Let Me Go is speculative fiction and it follows three children who went to school together and then into adulthood when they realise that the world they thought they knew is actually very different. It's one of those books that's quite hard to talk about without spoiling it. Again, one of my favourite books of all time. I would encourage you just to go into it without knowing too much about it. If you like that one and you're looking for something similar, I'd recommend his book Clara and the Sun because I feel like Clara and the Sun is a mashup of Never Let Me Go and his other book Remains of the Day. He's written many other books outside of those two, but those are his two really famous ones. They feel like a blend of those two things. Clara and the Sun is about an AI robot called Clara who lives in a shop and she worships the sun because many of her friends around her are solar powered and she thinks it's amazing and she's waiting to be bought and to be accepted into someone's family. I'd also recommend The Hierarchies by Roz Anderson, kind of doing degrees of separation here because that one feels quite a lot like Clara and the Sun. It's about a sex robot called Sylvie who is being created for a man who she calls her husband and she lives in the attic of his house and she is quite sentient. She knows a lot more than he knows she knows. And she's constantly learning because he's programmed her to be able to learn and research things because he wants to be able to have in-depth conversations with her. Other robots that are being created don't have the cap capabilities to search the web, for instance, but she does. That means that the longer she lives, the more uncomfortable she becomes with her role in his life. And we go from there. Someone would like a book that follows the entire childhood and adolescence of a girl. I'd recommend Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. I love this book up to a point. I think I'm in the minority when it comes to not loving it overall, which is why I'm recommending it because so many people absolutely love it. But it's about a young girl who lives her life over and over again. So she'll get to a point and she dies, but then her life restarts as a baby. And she kind of remembers when she died in the previous lives and she can take a different track. And that becomes more and more apparent to her as she gets older and the more lives that she has lived, almost just faint memories to her. She's not hugely 100% aware of what's going on, but she senses it, I think is what I mean. It has a World War twist in it that I just thought was a bit, I don't know, a bit much, didn't love it. But the premise of the book and the writing I thought was superb. And uh, yeah, for following a young girl from birth to adolescence, you don't get a book that's more about that than this because she does it so many times. Next, someone said, I need a book that feels like a very warm and comforting hug. I have two recommendations. One, His Dark Materials by Philip Pullman. Northern Lights in particular is one of my go-to comfy, cozy reads. I used to reread it every winter. Another book that I do reread every year is When Hitler Sold Pink Rabbit by Judith Carr. And it is one of my favorite books ever. I read it for the first time maybe when I was nine. And I know that cozy, comforting reads that have that nostalgia element to them don't always work when you're recommending them to other people because they're not gonna have that long relationship with the book that you have. But I promise that this book stands up. I have reread it so many times. Um, it is by Judith Carr, did I say that? When Hitler Saw Pink Rabbit by Judith Carr, I think I did. She grew up in Germany and she left Germany in the 1930s with her family when Hitler was rising to power because her family is Jewish. And this is a fictionalized account of that. So very much based on her life, but she's renamed the characters and changed a few things because it was easier to write that way. So it's about a girl called Anna, her brother Max and their parents. They leave Germany, move to Switzerland, then to France and then to England. There are three books in this trilogy, but the first one, can stand on its own if you just want to read one and also it is my personal favorite. It may sound strange to say that a warm hug of a book is one about 
fleeing a country, becoming a refugee and displacement. But there is a huge warmth to this book. It is about making connections with other people and yes being scared and being afraid and having to learn all these new things but coming together as a family and I think because Judith wrote it from her inner child's perspective there is that sense of wonderment and heart and it's got such a truth to it it's a book that I recommend all the time this next one made me giggle it says I know you don't enjoy romance but is there a book with romance in it that you like I mean let me tell you what kind of romance I enjoy in books. I enjoy Mrs. Caliban by Rachel Ingalls, which is about a housewife who is fed up of her life. She's also grie grieving the loss of her child and her husband won't communicate with her. So she falls in love with Larry, who is a man who is part man, part frog, and she embarks on an affair with him. That's the kind of ridiculousness and um, magical realist love that I will tolerate reading <laughs> in books. However, I do also like A Single Thread by Tracy Chevalier, which is following a woman who, what do they call women? It was in between the war, was it the lost women? Hang on, I need to Google. A surplus woman, that was what they were called, a surplus woman. So her fiance had died in the war, as did her brother. And there were lots of single young women who were told they'd probably never meet someone and marry and have kids because so many men had died in the First World War. So this is about her, her name is Violet, and her finding community in the women around her. There is a romance element to it too, but it's very much secondary to the rest of the book. And um, I thought it was delightful. Next up, someone says, I would like something about grief and losing a parent, ideally a mother, thank you. Non-fiction wise, there is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zauner, which is about her reconnecting with her mother when her mother had cancer. And what it's like to have a relationship with a parent when you know that they're going, or probably going to die, when your relationship hasn't always been great. Um, so rebuilding that, and in this case, their relationship was rebuilt through food. So if you're also looking for a book about food, because there were some questions about that, then I would recommend that. Um, it will make you both sad and hungry, just be warned. I would also recommend Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter, which is in part inspired by Crow by Ted Hughes. It's about a family where the wife slash mother has died and Crow invades the family house as this embodiment of grief and taunts the dad and the kids. That book in part inspired Maps of Our Spectacular Bodies by Manny Mortimer, which is or can be read as almost like the prequel in an alternate universe to Grief is a Thing with Feathers because it's about a mother slash wife who has recently found out that her cancer has returned. She knows she's going to die. And the cancer has a voice in the book, which is very much like Crow's voice in Grief is a Thing with Feathers. And um, yeah, it's about all of the family relationships, the history of their relationships. And it's brilliant. It was my favourite book from the Booker Prize last year. And I was horrified when it did not get shortlisted. Someone else is looking for a book set in Vietnam. I would recommend Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper-Smith, which is a bit of a ghost story set over two time periods about two women's lives who seem to be mirroring each other. Uh, it's very unsettling. Not a perfect novel, but I was so captivated by the prose. It was great in many 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 ways and uh very scary in some so if you're not into unsettling stuff maybe that one is not for you someone else said they would like a book similar to woman eating by claire coda which is the book i mentioned earlier about a young vi vampire who's trying not to eat people i would recommend uh, nell stevens briefly a delicious life which is a novel narrated by a ghost it is a queer story as well and it has similar feelings to claire coda's book because it's this supernatural narrator who is trying to fathom you know what it means to be human i guess as a non-human person and a book i haven't read yet but i really want to read and will be reading in the autumn and i've heard good things about is board gay werewolf by bye 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 i want to say stephen tony tony santarella which is about a young werewolf who's trying to figure out his life and i get similar vibes from that one so fingers crossed next someone says they're looking for a book like hamnet by maggie o'farrell which is about shakespeare's wife and the death of their son 
I would recommend reading Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell if you haven't read that already. It is different, but it is another historical novel of hers. And if you enjoyed specifically the imagery in her prose in Hamlet, then I think you would enjoy the marriage portrait. But I want to kind of throw another recommendation in there, which is different, but bear with. I would like to recommend Creatures of Passage by Morowa Yejiri, which is about a community that's trying to save a child from an evil force in its village. It has folklore elements and there is a person in the story who people believe to be a witch, which is what people thought about. Shakespeare's wife too, Agnes. So I think there are huge similarities theme-wise between those two things, even though Creatures of Passage is a modern day novel. It is not set in Shakespearean times. I was asked for recommendations for an intercollected short story collection, Revenge by Yoko Ogawa. It's one of my favorite short story collections and probably my most favorite interconnected short story collection. Set around an apartment building, which is one of my favorite setups and it is creepy and unsettling and it would be a really good one to read around Halloween time. Someone else said, I'm looking for an intergenerational novel, preferably focusing on women, so Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Evaristo, which was mentioned earlier. I'd also recommend Memphis by Tara Stringfellow, which is about three generations of women in one family. And I'd also recommend The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde, which was my favorite book in 2020, about three women in different time periods and their relationship to this house in the north of England, near the Scottish border. If you like Sarah Waters and Ali Smith, you will absolutely adore that book. Next up, I would like a novel about a woman writer or artist blossoming. May I recommend Margaret the First by Danielle Dutton, which is a book about Margaret Cavendish, a woman in the 1600s who was extremely ambitious and just wanted to go out and learn and achieve things and write things. I'd also recommend a book by Anna Marie Crowhurst called The Illumination of Ursula Flight, which again is about a young woman who wants to become a writer. In this instance, she wants to become uh, a scriptwriter, she wants to write for the theatre, and it's about whether or not that goal ends up being something that she loves doing. Someone else said, I would love a book about solitude with a character who isn't always seen to be sad and lonely. I, I have lots of recommendations for this, but I think the one I want to shout out is Chrysalis by Anna Metcalf. It's a book about a woman who cuts herself off from society. And people around her can't understand why she's done it. It's a novel told in three parts and we get the perspective of three people in her life, but never from her. And they're just perplexed as to why she wants to spend all this time on her own. So they think she must be lonely and sad, but um, we can glean the reader that she is not those things. And actually it has this sense of empowerment. Someone else asked for my favorite queer books that aren't YA or fantasy. I've made lots of videos with loads of LGBTQ recommendations, so I will leave that linked in the description box down below, because um, there are just so many that I would like to shout about. So go over there if you want to find a huge list of stuff. Um, literary books with non-human supernatural narrators like Woman Eating and Briefly A Delicious Life. So I would recommend under the Skin by Michelle Faber, which like with Never Let Me Go by Kazuo Ishiguro is a book that I can't really talk about without spoiling. It's a very short book. It's about a woman who is driving around Scotland and kidnapping men. And I don't really want to say more than that, other than if you have seen the film with Scarlett Johansson, you should still read the book and vice versa because the book and the film are really different. And I think those differences are really intriguing. Next up, I would like a book, a novel with a complicated dad-son relationship, The Coward by Jared McGuinness, is a book I read last year, I think it was last year, no, yes, yes, it was last year, and I loved it, it is a novel, but it's, it's based a lot around Jared's life, the main character is called Jared, for instance, and I can't remember the specific quote that's at the front of the book, but it's something amusing. It's something like the difference between fact and fiction is like denial or something. It's something like that. So it's very much based on his life. But it's about Jared, who was in an accident um, as a young man and became a wheelchair user and then had to reconnect with his father, who he'd had a terrible relationship with. And they have to learn how to be around each other. And I loved it. Would also recommend the audiobook of that one. 
Someone else said, I'm looking for an epic book like Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. May I recommend Tomb of Sand by Jason Charlie Shree, which I read earlier this year. It is massive and it is about one woman's life and has all of these references to pathways and doors going, accessing memories almost. A little bit like the book Exit West, but not as on the nose when it comes to the magical realism expression of that. It's it's more theoretical than that, more about being in her head. But it is following one woman's life and all the things that have happened to her. And I thought it was a huge achievement, that book. I mean, it won the International Booker last year, so I'm hardly the first person to have said that. Uh, next up, someone said, I would like a memoir with food. Takeaway by Angela Hui is a book I read earlier this year and really enjoyed. It's about her experience growing up in Wales in a small town where her parents ran the only Chinese takeaway and how that set her apart from her friends at school because she was always working at the takeaway. I'd also recommend Tiny Moons by Nina Mingya Pals, which is about a year that she spent in Shanghai and all the delicious food that she ate. Next, someone said they want a book about failed friendship and the recovery around that. How Kyoto Breaks Your Heart by Florentina Liao is a book all about that. And it's the best book about broken friendship that I think I've ever read. Another person said, I would like a book re reminiscent of Dairy Girls. The book that always brings to mind for this is Duck Feet by Eli Percy, but it's out of print. However, you can pre-order it now. It is being reissued. So if you would like to check that out, do. It's if Dairy Girls was set in Scotland. Um, yes, that, that's my elevator pitch for it. You can go and research more if you would like to find out more. Someone else said they would like a book about rewilding, a novel please. I would recommend Wolf Border by Sarah Hall, which is about a woman who is commissioned to try and rewild wolves in the Lake District. Someone else said they would like a novel set over the course of a day. I'd recommend Untold Night and Day by Bay Suar, which is set over the course of one night and one day. And it's very hypnotic, very strange, where characters almost blend together and switch places. It's about poetry and art and expression and body. Someone else said, I would like an uh, intense book that is set during a heat wave, sealed by Naomi Booth, which I mentioned very early on in this video, is a dystopian set during a heat wave in Australia. Um, but I'd also recommend, which is my go-to book for a heat wave, Age of Miracles by Karen Thompson Walker, which is kind of a climate crisis novel, but it's about the earth getting knocked off its axis. So the temperature rises, days last longer, and it just basically ruins society. Everything becomes very hot and we're following a teenage girl's experience of that. And we look at how it's impacting the world, but really it's about her life and the immediate surroundings of her and her parents' relationship falling apart. So I liked the the split, like the inner world stuff and the big world stuff. Someone else said they would like a book similar to Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. If you like that, you will love the subtweet by Vivek Shreya. I personally preferred the subtweet. It's a book I think about a lot. It is about two musicians. I don't know why I forgot that word. It's about two musicians. And one of the musicians does a cover song of the other and their version becomes more successful. And it's about how both of these characters deal with that. And it is really intense. It's great. Someone else is looking for a book similar to My Dark Vanessa. Vladimir by Julia May Jonas gives me similar feelings. It's about a female lecturer whose husband, who's also a lecturer, has been accused of sexual misconduct at work. And it's about how she deals with that, but also just the spiteful relationship that they seem to have with each other. I really enjoyed reading that book and I think it would make a really good book club book read as well. Next up, someone said they're looking for a non-cliche World War II book. I know what you mean. Those books can get quite cliche. And for that, I would recommend The House Opposite by Barbara Noble. She is someone who lived in London during the Blitz and this is her novel about that. It's very much not cliche, very much based on her experience. And it was one of my favorite books a couple of years ago. Next up, someone says, I'm looking for something like Vicar of Dibley, as in cozy, small town, 
petty conflicts sometimes funny. Um, and the book that I had to recommend for this, I mean, you could recommend The Appeal by Janice Hallett, I think, um, but the one that I really wanted to shout about was This Green and Pleasant Land by Aisha Malik, which is about a man whose mother on her deathbed tells him that she wants him to open a mosque in their local English town and he decides he's going to have to do it because his mum asked him to but he encounters a lot of conflict from the locals and it is both heartwarming and funny and also exploring lots of important topics. Next, a novella please that will suck me in like a black hole all Yours by Claudia Pinheiro is a short, sharp thriller. Passing by Nella Larson is one of my favorite classics. It is about colorism, it's about two friends, one of whom is passing as white, and it's what The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett was based on, but I prefer the original, I prefer Passing. The ending, ooh, I think about it all the time. And I'd also recommend Follow Me to Ground by Sue Rainsford if you're looking for a magical realism story about a father and a daughter who seem to be able to heal local communities by burying people in the ground and letting the ground fix them. A police procedural, please, where the protagonist is queer uh, and not male. So I would recommend The Last Place You Look by Kristen Lepionka, which has a queer, is she a detective in it? I think she might be, she's not, she is a, like a private investigator. So she doesn't work with the police, but often she is alongside the police and she's trying to solve crimes quicker than them. And it's a great series. And then finally, someone said, I would like something about communist East Berlin, please, a novel. And I would recommend Confessions with Blue Horses by Sophie Haddock, which I read a few years ago. And is about a family that grew up in East Berlin and then later moved to London. And one of the daughters is trying to work out what happened to a piece of art that she can remember hung in her family's home when she was a child. She goes back to East Berlin and she goes through lots of records of her family too. So those are all the books I wanted to recommend today. Thank you for sending in your recommendation requests. If you would like me to recommend a book to you, as I said, to gift as a Christmas present, to be honest, if you want to gift yourself a Christmas present, that's fine. Leave the request in a comment down below and I will answer as many as I can in that video when I make it in a couple of months time. If you are new to my channel and you like this video and you would like to subscribe, that'd be lovely. If you like my content and you would like to consider supporting me on Patreon, that'd be very kind. Link to that is in the description box down below. Patreon is a place where you can support creators and the support over there that I receive enables me to keep creating free content for everybody on here and also funds my time making it accessible by making captions and all of that good stuff. Thank you so much for joining me. I will see you for another video next week. If you have any books you'd like to recommend to people based on the request today, please leave those in a comment. I love you all very much. I'll see you soon.